Welcome to the Vineyard Church Message of the Week. We hope you enjoy this message. For more information on this podcast or other resources, go to vineyardlive.us. To learn more about us, go to the vineyardchurch.us. Doing today? Doing well? I want to give a shout out to all the campuses here as well, Muhammad, Sullivan, Bloomington, and Vineyard Live. Can we make them feel welcome, y'all? One church, many locations. Yes. Yes. Y'all ready to hear a message today? Well, if y'all not ready to hear one, I'm definitely ready to preach one. <laughs> Man, this message is, uh, you know, we're talking about a generous life, God's financial plan and how to steward the money he's entrusted us to steward. And uh, with that, we're going to be talking a lot about tithe in this message. A lot. And that's okay. Because I believe that God has something to say about how we understand the tithe. And I know probably people are saying, ah, here we go again, the tithe again, this message about money again, the church just want my money, yada, yada. You know what? Just turn that voice off. Just turn it off. Just, just, just put that voice to the side for just a second and just listen to what God has to say to you. Open your eyes, open your hearts to hear what it is that God may have to say to you about this message because I believe this message is going to be life transforming. This series has been life transforming. You know, God, God doesn't need your money, but you need to be blessed and walk more fully in the abundance that he provides. Because I'm tired of the poverty spirit running rampant in the church. I'm tired of the spirit of greed running rampant in the church. That's why I believe that's imperative to get the principles of the tithe. It's imperative to understand what it is that God has for us when we understand the tithe. So that voice you have, you know what, just turn it off, because it may be connected to the, the father of lies anyways, okay? And let's just be open, and we can pray. But before I do that, I just got to give a shout out to the Super Bowl game that happened last Sunday. What? <laughs> Now, I was told that, I, I, I didn't know we were that partial to who won, but since we're talking about a generous life, you know, I think the Falcons role modeled how to be generous because they just gave away the game. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm, I, enough said, enough said. We're going to go ahead and pray and we're going to get it in, all right? So thank you, Jesus. You are amazing, amazing, amazing. I pray and pr I pray that... You speak through me through this message, albeit weighty, albeit challenging. May it be life, life, life transformative. May it be high impact, Lord, because you're in this, not me, because you are stirring the hearts and minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I remember when my fiance, uh, Regina, who was my fiance at the time, I should say, I don't have a fiance now, all right? Don't be looking up here at me like that. I'm crazy, all right? Baby, I love you. She's at home sick, by the way. Get well. Anyway, I remember when I, was, um, when I was with Regina. She was my fiance at the time. We were sitting in this room, and we were looking at this computer, and on the computer was an Excel spreadsheet that had all our debt up on there, okay? Because we were like, you know what? We're about to get married to each other. We got to find out, you know, how much debt you packing, you know what I mean? <laughs> For real. Married couples... It's probably wise to do that. People who want to get married, it's probably wise to do that, have that meeting, and then you're probably going to see something like, hey! <laughs> anyway, I'm on the, we're on the computer screen, man, and you know, we're, we're looking at the Excel spreadsheet, and I got all this debt, and I'm sweating bullets because at the, the bottom line number is $120,000 between the both of us. That was not a good day. I was a little depressed that day. Regina, you know, Regina had accrued this credit card debt from, from her time in, in school. You know, she had like three, four credit cards. Man, it's crazy how credit card lenders get at students these days. It's, it's wild. 
It means students swap one credit card, get the, get the, get the credit card with the lowest, fine, uh, lowest interest rate, and you put all that on there, that one. Just one. That's all you need. Anyways, I, I went to a, a liberal arts, a small liberal arts college out of state with tuition through the roof, okay? I mean, $25,000 a year. I mean, my goodness. What was I thinking? I could have went to a state school, got the same degree. It would have been okay. But anyways, I'm looking at this, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. And $100,000 of that was my debt I was bringing to the table. And so Regina was looking at me and was like, I don't think I want to marry you. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I don't blame you because your FICO score is going to take a hit. <laughs> Listen, we, were, <laughs> we weren't tithing. We were too scared to tithe, y'all. We had a crazy monster debt. We were living check to check. We were making the minimum payments to, for all our loans, basically paying off interest, basically. We weren't doing nothing, you know? So we weren't tithing. Tith what do you mean giving my money to the church? Giving my money to that pastor right there. Giving my money to that pastor. Listen, listen, you don't give your tithe to a man. You giving your tithe to God. It ain't about hap and die. It ain't about how, how putty or I want you to handle your money. It ain't about that. Kill that right now. You give your tithe to God, okay? God, first and foremost, okay? I just want to make sure that that's abundantly clear. I don't want to pay my tithe because I don't trust that so and so and so. Who cares what they're going to do with your money? Give it to God. He knows what you did. He knows what you did. So anyways, I'm not paying my time, I'm not giving my money to the church, and da 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 I was on that. But we got to get this tithe thing because it's life transformational, because as soon as we tithe, our worlds got rocked. Our money started to do some funny things, more than we can ask, think, or imagine. But in the church, tithing got this bad rap. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, yeah, uh, you know, like church tax or something, you know? <laughs> we got to get this thing, y'all. Robert Morris, um, he came out with this book called The Blessed Life. Great book. We've been pitching this book. We've been um, advocating for this book. If you um, can buy the book, get the book. There's not everything in the book we agree with, but there's a lot in that book that is mind-blowing. So a lot of the ideas we're going to be um, hopefully giving to you through this series. So let's unpack the tithing together, shall we? Let's, to understand the tithe, we've got to understand two principles. The principles of, well, the principle of the first, and I'm going to break it down into two principles. The principles of first things first. The principle of that we pay the first of our first fruits. Okay? We tithe the first of our first fruits, and then the second principle is the principle of the firstborn. But I want to talk about the firstborn first. Actually, I just went out of order. I apologize. I'm going to talk about the principle of the firstborn first because that's actually near and dear to my heart. I'm a firstborn. Shout out to the firstborns in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we running things out. Yeah, I'm playing around. God loves us all. God loves us all. But listen, in Exodus 13, too, it says this. It says this, consecrate to me all the firstborn. Whatever is the first to open the womb among the people of Israel, both man and of beast, is mine. Okay, so he clearly says here that the firstborn of everything is his. Remember the ten plagues? You know, well, the, the Israelites were chilling in the land of Goshen. They were enslaved by the Pharaoh, and Moses came out the woodwork talking about, let my people go, right? And then, you know, the Pharaoh was like, no, I'm not letting them go. And so the ten plagues came at him, you know, and on the tenth plague, that's what did him in. Right? The firstborn got God. And if, if you didn't have the clean, pure blood of the land, lamb for the spirit of death to pass over, then your firstborn was, was, was out. And it's funny, it's crazy how the tenth plague, tenth tithe, tithe, tenth, you know, firstborn, he was trying to connect some dots there with the tithe. Let's move on. Let's move on. It says this in, in, in the same chapter, verse 12 and 13. You shall set apart to the Lord all that first opens the womb. All the firstborn of your animals that are males shall be the Lord's. Every firstborn of a donkey you, you shall redeem with a lamb. Okay, even the donkeys are getting in with this. Okay. Or if you will not redeem it, you shall break its neck. 
every firstborn of a man among your sons you shall redeem. Okay, so basically all firstborns were his and either had to be sacrificed or redeemed. If you were clean, if you were a clean firstborn, you were good enough to be sacrificed, animal-wise, okay? You were going to be sacrificed. But if you were unclean, an unclean firstborn as the animal had to be redeemed, or all firstborn children of men had to be redeemed. And like the tenth plague, okay, the Israelites, they were safe. They had the blood of the clean, pure lamb. So they, all the firstborns, were all redeemed. They weren't sacrificed. They were redeemed. This should sound very familiar to us. We, man, were all marred by sin. We are all considered unclean. What's it say in Romans 3, 23? For All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we are all out marred by sin, unclean. But Jesus, but Jesus, but Jesus came and became sin. But Jesus came and took on our sin so that we can have right standing with him. But Jesus came and redeemed all humanity. But Jesus, what's it say in this follow, in the same sentence in Romans 3, 24? It says, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God, but are justified are justified by his grace as a gift that's found through the redemption of Jesus. We are justified just if I have never sinned. Why? How? Because we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We have been purchased by a high price, his life. So we can be justified. We have been redeemed to be clean like him, in right standing in him, pure, spotless, in every way, like Jesus. Listen, guys, I want to give a side note. Unless you have been aligned, unless you are in Jesus, then you are not redeemed. And I'm talking to everyone here, and even the campuses, Muhammad, Sullivan, Bloomington. If you are listening to this message, and you are not redeemed, then you're live. If you're not redeemed, then talk to somebody about this and ask them about how you can be redeemed. And if you don't have anybody in your churches that aren't redeemed, then we need to be going out there inviting people to get in those seats. Look, you got open seats. There should be some butts filling these seats, y'all. And it is not about law. It is not about making people do something that they don't want to do. It's not about forcing them to do something they don't want to do. It's not about taking this book right here and dumping them with thou shalt and thou shalt not. Thou shalt, thou shalt not. Yeah, da, da. No, it's not about that. But it's about the life. It's about living a blessed life. It's about living an abundant life. It's about living the life to the full, not the life to the lack. It's about living this good life and inviting people in on this life. Who are we to sit here and tell, say, I'm not going to invite him to this life. No, invite everybody to this life. Let them make the decision themselves. Let's get in on this. It's not about law. It's about life and life to the full and life everlasting. So Jesus, he was given as a firstborn, right? He was given by God like that of a tithe to redeem humanity. Now, I just, I didn't call Jesus money, but I said that God gave Jesus like that of a tithe to redeem humanity. God apparently believed in this tithing system in such a way that he decided to do it first because God gave Jesus before the foundation of the world He gave him first so that he may be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So therefore, he gave him in faith. He gave him in faith knowing that, hey, I'm going to give my son so that you may come into 
this fold so that you may come into this life. So Jesus was like that of a tithe given to redeem humanity. And our tithe, we give. Our first portion that we give is given to redeem or given to align the rest of our cash flow. It's given to make sure that the rest of our cash flow has the spirit of God on it. And we're saying, you know what? I'm going to give my first portion so that the rest of all my money be aligned with the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is blessed. So now let me talk about the principle of the first fruits. In, the, in Exodus 23, 19, it says that the first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring to the house of the Lord. I want to say something about this. It says that we tithe first, the first of our first fruits. Okay? Putty talked about this last time, and I'm just going to go just a little further because I believe that it's important for us to get this principle. We tithe the first of our first fruits. Can you imagine the Israelites back in the day with their plot of land and their slaving, their blood, sweat, and tearing over this land to make sure that it produces an abundant crop, crop, a great crop, right? So they're doing everything they can, and finally the crop comes. The crop is here. Oh my goodness, the first fruits are here, and the sun comes to the dead. It's like, dead. Daddy, Daddy, is that for us? And, and I'm sure that Daddy's scratching his head like, I know I got to take this tithe to the house of the Lord, but it would be really nice to feed my family with this crop right now. Now, you know they were tempted with that. But instead, they were like, ah, oh, okay, I'm taking this tenth of my first fruit. They surrounded a bushel or whatever they did. I don't know what they did. I'm not a farmer. But anyways, they took that crop and they took it to the house of the Lord. Fast forward to today, right? You work your butt off for a paycheck, right? You work your butt off for a paycheck, and then you get that check. And then you, you read what's on that check, and like, yeah, I'm in the money, boy. Then you think about all those bills you got to pay. Oh, man, dang, electricity bills do. Then you got to think about that rent, that mortgage. Oh, my goodness. Then you start thinking about all the groceries you got to buy. And then Sally Mae you got to pay off. And and Wells Fargo, and the banks, and all this other stuff. And then you're like, man, I'm not going to have nothing in this check. Tithe? Heck no, I'm not tithing this week, man. I'm good, I'm good. And besides, tithing means you pay 10% of the gross income. Y'all was like, oh, dang, Clay, why'd you have to say it like that, man? Dang. Yeah, so I'm not tithing this check right now. I have my eyes on a pair of J's in the mall, man. I have my eyes on a cart coach purse in the mall. I have my eyes on me. I want to pay so I want to buy me something. I want to live off something. I'm not tithing this week. You know, the tithe is given in faith because the first portion, the first portion is the redemptive portion. The first portion is the redemptive portion that says, you know what, God, I'm going to put you over money. I'm going to have you over. Listen, I'd rather live off of 90, 80, 70 percent of my money with God than 100 percent without him. I'd rather live on 30 20, even 10% of my money with God, with the God of the impossible, with the God that will do the miraculous, with the God that took a, a, a schoolboy's lunch and multiplied it for the masses rather than live on 100% of my money without him. Got real quiet in here, but that is okay. When Regina and I had $120,000 in debt, we weren't tithing because we were too nervous to. We were too scared to. And because we weren't tithing, our money wasn't really aligned to the kingdom of God. It wasn't really aligned to the, to, to the will of the Lord. And therefore, it was more aligned to the spirit of this world, a.k.a. it was more aligned to mammon. What's mammon, Clay? Let me talk a little bit about that real quick. What's Jesus say in, uh, in Luke 16, 13? He was, he was running game on his, uh, on his disciples. He was teaching them. That's what he does. He's teaching. And uh, he was teaching his disciples. And in the midst of him and teaching uh, his disciples were the Pharisees. And everybody was kind of listening in to what Jesus had to say. Because even the haters wanted to hear what he had to say. You know what I mean? And what was he saying? He was like, no servant can serve two masters. Mm. For either he will hate the one 
and love the other. Or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, a.k.a. money. Let that sink in for just a second. You cannot serve God and money. What he means is this, is that I, mammon is that money in and of itself is not evil. Don't hear me saying that. Mammon that is attached to money is what creates all kinds of perversion, is what steals a heart away from God. And you cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is basically the spirit that rests on money, and its influence is strong. It's strong. I've been under the influence of mammon like, whoa, I, I have many, many stories about me being under the influence of mammon. But listen, even today, even today, what I know today, I have to check myself before I wreck myself. I have to check myself before mammon can, 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 can come in because if I don't, I will let mammon come in and have me doing some wh whacked out things. Mammon will have you saying things like, trust in God. No, I mean, trust in money, not God. Look at that. I'm so ingrained in trusting God. You know, yeah, let's go. But, but it will have you saying, trust in money, not God. Trust in wealth. Trust in your riches that you can see, not Jesus you can't see. Money will make you prominent. Money will make you famous. Money will make you look good. Money will get you that girl. Money will get you that guy. Money, 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 money will solve all the problems in the world. Money will, will, will get you out of that depression. You know that's a lie, or else millionaires and billionaires won't be depressed. Am I speaking truth? Money, mammon, is a spawn of Satan. It's a spirit of Satan, and it's a liar. So when it comes to money, it either has the spirit of mammon on it or the spirit of God on it. So my question, what's on your money? The spirit of God or the spirit of mammon? Mammon, man, BC, I was all about mammon. Mammon, mammon, mammon for me. I wanted to do whatever it was necessary for me to accumulate more and more and more money. I remember um, selling drugs. I used to sell drugs, and, 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 and it, was, it was selling drugs for more money. I wanted to get money. It was about that money. It was about that hustle. You know, I thought it was a way to go, to get money. Yes, yes, let's go. And I would cheat people in selling drugs to, to, to get more money. It was, it was crazy. I remember stealing money. Every chance I could, got to steal money, I would steal money. I, I want to go run up in people's houses and, and steal possessions so I could sell them on the street for more money. For me, it was about the paper. For me, it was about the Mo Cheddar makes everything better. For me, it was about the Benjamins. It's all about the Benjamins. And I will do anything and everything to get more Benjamins. It was, it, 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 it was about money to me. Mammon will have you playing yourself left and right and have you living out your means. Mammon will have you going broke trying to keep up with the Joneses. We need to keep up with your ownses. All right. Man, mammon will have you trying to get that house you can't afford. It's okay. Stop paying that extra large mortgage and get back into a mortgage you can afford. It's okay. Mammon will try to have you riding in a Cadillac with them rims when you can afford an economy car. You know? It's okay. Stop stunting and getting in the avalanche. Get back into that economy car. It is okay. Mammon will have us living out of our means. And mammon will be pumping fear, will pump the fear of God in, in you losing your money. It, 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 that's why I didn't want to tithe. It, it, will, it will have you fearing going broke, you know? And also, mammon does what else? Well, there's another thing mammon does. It actually perpetuates the spirit of poverty. Have you, have you, have you like, thinking that it's... It's a shame. It's a shameful thing to have money. Oh, no, I don't want that. I don't want that. I got to look this way. Ah, no, I'm just going to say no to money here. No, no, no. I'm, no, money is, nah, no, money is kind of evil. No, it isn't really evil. It's the love of money that is. So, so what's on your money? The spirit of God or the spirit of mammon? 
So eventually, Regina and I, we, we started tithing eventually. And when we started tithing, eventually we started seeing our money work in crazy ways. The minute we started tithing, guys, the minute we started tithing, the spirit of mammon lost its grip on our hearts. And more of the spirit of God came in and rushed in and started to dwell on our money. Things started happening left and right. The more we understood the Father's heart on debt, the more we would want to run, run, run away from it. We did everything we could to run away from it. Y'all know those Dave Ramsey lessons where he talks about running away like a gazelle from debt. If y'all know Dave Ramsey, you know what I'm talking about. We had to run away. We had to apply principles. We had to, to change the way we lived. We were not about trying to spend our money on frivolous matters. We had to, we had to, um, to basically live within our means. You know, that meant to cut going out to eat all the time. That, mean, that meant to, to get a budget, you know, to, to really start to think twice on how we handled our money. We started really taking heart to all the financial advice that came in and poured in. We applied the snowball method to all the loans that we had. Well, really all my, the loans I had, you know. I had three of them, thanks. But anyway, I had, we applied a snowball method. And what that is is basically that we, we paid minimum payments on all the other loans except for the smallest one. And we aggressively went after that thing, aggressively tried to pay as much of it as possible per month. And eventually, bow, 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 that thing was knocked out the box. And all that money we took from the small loan, we went to the middle loan. And then bow, 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 knocked it out the box. All the whole time, our FICO score was going from nasty to classy. You know? You know, and, 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 and I was gonna get in the middle loan, boom, boom, boom. Then we knocked that thing out the box. Then we took all the money that we paid for our small loan, middle loan, put it to the big behemoth loan. And that thing took a little while, and we were chipping away at that thing. And next thing you know, our FICO score is escalating, escalating. It's going from ashy to classy. And then we're boom, boom, boom. The next thing you know, we're done with the, we paid off 120K of debt in 10 years, y'all. And that was because of the tithe. That was because we allowed God to work with our money. We co-labored with God with our money. And then we promised to handle credit cards differently as well. The credit card, listen, we promised that every time we, we won, we just rocked one credit card. So Regina and I both had one credit card, one account. And we said, okay, every time we put money on that credit card, when the bills come, we're going to pay off the whole thing. We're not messing around with payments on this thing. We're paying off the whole thing. And our FICO score liked that a lot. Next thing you know, I'm dealing, listen, I'm dealing with the, the, uh, the, the Pitts FICO score going up to like really top notch, like near the top, near perfect score because of God in our finances and helping us, training us, co-laboring with us. Because you know when we tithe, we are saying no to mammon and yes to God. We are saying no to mammon and yes to God in our finances to help us grow this thing up to help us live a better way, a better life. We're no longer living check to check. We no longer have bad debt. debt. We're no longer, we have more money in the bank than we thought we would at this time because God helped us. The God was for us. God, we allow God to say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna tithe so I can walk more abundantly and have more of a bless, access, more of the blessings that you have for me. And now we can give to ministries around the world as an offering. That's different. Listen, the tithe is 10% given to the house of the Lord. Anything above that is an offering. You don't split your tithe up to give it 5% here. That's not a tithe. The tithe is 10% to the church, to local church you attend. The offering is anything on top of that. We were able to be blessed in such a way that we're giving to, to local ministries and worldwide ministries, even to this day. And Julie is going to talk about the offering next week called God the Rewarder. And campus and insights, Lucy and Bloomington, Sullivan, Muhammad, your campus pastor will be talking about that next week as well. It's going to be good. But, you know, we talked last week about God the Creator. This week about Jesus the Redeemer. Next week is God the Rewarder. 
sounds a lot like the Father, Son, Holy Spirit to me, huh? So anyways, we, we're giving above and beyond the tithe called offering, and that's been blessing us because we're, we're, we're trying to walk this thing out. But as we tithe, it's about co-laboring with God. It's about working with his plan rather than him trying to work with your plan. And remember, this tithing thing is not about law. It's not about making you do certain things you don't want to do, making you um, um, do something with your money you don't want to. No, it's about living the blessed life. It's about walking more fully in this abundant life. And so moving on, the last point I want to cover is this, is that, you know, we talked about the firstborn, we talked about the, the, the first fruits and first thing first, but now goes to the house of God. We all want to talk about how the tithe goes to the house of God. I don't have much time to, to reread the passage I just read, but I just want to say this, that the tithe is brought to the house of the Lord and where you attend. And when you tithe your first fruits in faith to the house of the Lord and give to the house of the Lord, you will be blessed. Again, it's not giving your money to man. It's about tithing and being faithful to God. This thing is between you and God. It's not about Hap and Di, not about Mike and Julie, not about how we are going to uh, 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 appropriately handle your money. It's about you being faithful to what God is doing in your life. And here's the deal. When you step out in faith and tithe to the house of the Lord and you don't know how those bills are going to get paid, when you tithe in faith to the house of the Lord and you don't know how those groceries are going to be purchased for your family, when you tithe in faith to the house of the Lord and you don't know how those bills are going to be paid, those mortgages, those debt, all that debt's going to be paid off. When you tithe in faith to the house of the Lord, do know, do know that that tithe frees up your money for it to have the Spirit of God work for it, work with it. Work on it. Do know that that tithe that you, that you step out in faith to give to the house of the Lord frees up your money to, uh, to poise and position it for miracles. To poise and position it to be extended. To do things that you, can, you never thought of, asked for, or imagined. Do know that when you tithe in faith to the house of the Lord that your money will be loosed and redeemed to do things beyond your wildest dreams. Because the God of the impossible, the God of the impossible, the God of miracles is saying, test me in this. Test me in this. Test me! I dare you to test me in this. And this is not about law. This is not about you got to do this right now or else. No, it's about living the abundant life. It's about living the blessed life. It's about walking more fully in his abundance that he has to offer him, offer you. It's about partnering with him in such a way that you're saying, I'm going to put God over money and not the other way around. And that's what my prayer is today. So my action step is, will you step out in faith and tithe 10% of your gross income? Again, tithing is not about law, but it's about life. Let's pray. You're amazing, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for for your goodness, your faithfulness, what you've done, how you've redeemed humanity. And I pray, Lord God, that we continue to learn how to be honest, faithful stewards of what you've entrusted us with. So we, that we may continue to be used powerfully by you and live that blessed life so we can be a blessing to the world. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.
And the church said, Amen. 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 Thanks for listening to the message today. To experience more powerful messages, go to vineyardlive.us or join our Vineyard Live Plus community to view conferences, trainings, and special teachings.